Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Spline. What exactly is Spline? Well, it is probably one of the easiest to use 3D applications out there. This is not going to compete with Max, Maya, or Blender for features, but it's also not going to compete with them for learning curves. So if you want to get in and start doing uh, some 3D development, Spline might be a good one for you. Here you can see a typical scene. Uh, you've got full mouse control over things, left mouse button to orbit, uh, middle mouse button to pan with the alt key held down, and the uh, scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You also have fixed uh, defined controls over here with your widget. Uh, you can switch to an isometric perspective at any time. Uh, anything you select in the scene, there is a uh, widget, uh, like a widget capability for it. Over here you see your um, uh, scene graph. So for example, this is the composition of this car model. So I could select it at the top. That is the entire car. Here again, you have your standard manipulator so you can uh, move things in certain directions. You can scale them and, and rotate them and so on. You see here it is made up of a number of different pieces. You'll notice this one is an emissive piece with this blue material attached to it. Any of these materials, we can go into them uh, and edit them accordingly. Here is a list of all of the materials in the scene. Material system is very simple. I do have to point that out. Uh, there is no... Um, the, the, there's literally just properties down here, so there's no texturing in this application. Probably the biggest uh, missing feature at this point in time. There's also no real UV mapping either, so you're going to have to work around those aspects of it. But otherwise, um, it, it's a pretty complete and solid modeling tool. By the way, you can also uh, select everything. You're going to see up here, you've got the ability to do things like post-processing. So here we've got like an absolute ton of bloom going on for some reason. Let's jack that bloom down a little bit. Chromatic aberration, uh, pixelation. So we can turn that down to say 10% level pixelation. So you do have these abilities right here. You can set it up to render in a variety of different sizes for predefined reasons. Um, so, for example, you're creating a TikTok video or doing something a render for Twitter or for particular devices or 1080p, etc. Those are all predefined there. I'll stick it with uh, responsive right now. Uh, so you do have all of these controls over here. Nice thing here is when you are done with this, you can actually export your work out. So this isn't just a useless toy. Now, it may not be immediately obvious how this works. What you're going to do is come here to public URL and you're going to switch it down. So if you want it, their native file format is the .spline format, but you can also switch it over to so for example, GLTF, or you can render out an image or the frame recording uh, that which is experimental. So that's how you can uh, spit out your end results. The cool thing here is you can also do uh, kind of a rudimentary animations here. So let's go ahead and play this scene. And what you can see, we have some uh, animations going on. I, I messed with it by moving the car. I don't know why it's being so slow at this point in time, but as you can see, you can have um, some basic animations, etc., defined for things. You can export these things out sort of like as a web application. So for example, if I grab the car here, you're gonna notice there are states and events that you can define for things, a variety of different things you can handle. So on start, uh, we can cycle, rewind, repeat, ease in, ease out. Uh, so you can do some basic animations and movements using uh, this event system and state system uh, com combination together. Let's go ahead and start off a new scene. I'll show you some of the modeling tools. So we're going to go completely new, like so. And da 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 da. Now, while we're here and we're now three and a half minutes into the video, you may ask the question okay, well, what platforms is this available on? Well, now is when I reveal, press F11, and you'll see we are in fact running this in a browser. There is a native version of this for a number of different platforms. We'll get back to that in a different, in a, a bit, but you can basically run this on whatever platform uh, supports um, 3D in the browser. So you should be good to go. Up here, you see we've got a number of different building tools. We can do uh, basic vector graphic shapes such as this. So we've got this in, this basic shape going on that we just created. Uh, now, when I turn off the select mode, we can go in and edit this guy. So you see here, we've got the edit options. Now you're gonna notice there are a number of different options here. So we can have it extrude out, uh, have it bevel when we extrude it. So there you see the end results of our, so our extrusion out a little bit more. So that is working with uh, vector style shapes. Now uh, go ahead and we'll delete that guy. Oh, I need to get out of that mode. We'll delete that guy. Instead, we'll use a uh, cube primitive instead. Here again, we can see it. Uh, you can uh, create using a variety of widgets. It, it's very simple to work with in that regard. Once we've got this guy created, we can go ahead and um, start editing it. So if we edit this guy, now, I don't actually want you to smooth. So let's turn the subdivisions down to zero. Now, what you're gonna notice is we have a number of different options available up here. So you see you've got like edge selection. So I can switch over 
and grab edges and we can move edges accordingly like so uh, we also have the ability to select uh, vertices and faces as you're going to see it uses f g and v hotkeys for doing those things the next thing you can do is um, extrusion so for example right here i think the extrusion modifier is that guy and then we'll grab this guy out here so this is the basis of box modeling so you have uh, your basic extrusion tools you also have an inset tool uh, which is sort of like an inward extrusion um, like so and we can pull that either way out uh, you also have the ability to do loop cuts so like this so if you're doing uh, poly polygonal modeling all of the basic tools you need are actually available here you also have the ability to slide edges um, and then when you've got a shape you like what you're often going to do is is subdivide on it like so so you've got more details in it so now that we've got this weird shape that we just created uh, we can also come over here and showcase one more thing which is the sculpting tools now the sculpting tools are very minimal but again that is kind of the idea behind the program it gives you some functionality but it doesn't give you a ton to get you confused now when you're in this sculpting mode you've got control over the radius and the strength of our sculpting so you can see uh, the in the modifier right here so I'm not sure what actual mode of sculpting I'm in. So that's, yeah, that's really minor. When you see it, it's pulling it out right there. This is the draw mode. There is also the grab mode, which is more for uh, manipulating existing shapes. So you see right here, kind of moving things around in the world using grab. We also have clay mode to add more details into your shape, like so. And then finally, we have smoothing. So let's go get that corner. We'll smooth it down a bit and done so you got these basic sculpting tools in here as well you've got the basics of uh polygonal modeling and really when you're doing box modeling you're not really using much more than uh extrudes loop cuts um and so on the only thing i'm kind of seeing missing from that selection of tools was uh the bevel functionality now we're gonna get into the area where this is by far the weak point of this tool and that is the material so right now there we can define a material um Okay, so I added a new property. I didn't actually want to do that. So here we've got an existing material here. You can go over here and get a, a material list. So we can create a new material here. And we'll call this my material. So this is a reusable material. But you're not going to find there isn't much to materials. So here we've got it. Basically, we can define a color like so. And then you can add a couple of properties on it. So the lighting effect. So we're going to go here and add a new property in. So instead of color, we could do it noise glass um matte cap um and so on oh there is image so there is texture support okay so there is texturing uh but it's not um it's not uh, uh uv mapping and that kind of stuff and i don't actually know if that's here let's let's get something a little bit more pronounced all right so there is basic texture mapping support in here i just don't can i add my own image no I can't, it doesn't seem. So there is rudimentary texture mapping in there. So I, I am corrected on that one, uh, my apologies. So once you've got your materials defined, you can actually reuse them pretty easily. So for example, if I go out of edit mode up here and we add a sphere into the world, like so, uh, I can go ahead and apply my material to that sphere and it will immediately update accordingly. And that is sort of how you go ahead and start creating things. And you can go up here. You've got some basic tools over here. By the way, you've got the ability to toggle off and on the UI if you want to just have it very streamlined once you get used to the hotkeys and so on. Uh, you can group things together. Um, and then you can have things in a hierarchical organization. So, for example, I could parent uh, our cube to this sphere. If you're just checking this out, what you're going to want to probably do is go into the library over here and get an idea of what it's capable of. And the other cool thing here is there's actually this um, object library, a variety of different categories. So let's say we needed some uh, some boxes in our world. We can literally come in here, uh, grab a box, and then we should be able to, okay, how do I, library, gift box, oh, add to my files. And then, should just be okay there we go so there is our gift box in the scene like so so you do have this library of assets here the other thing you're going to notice over here is if you go to scenes there are a number of scenes that they've created themselves that you can get an idea of the kind of stuff that you can do uh, using spline so for example here is a, a wizarding type world um, open this one up so again the entire idea behind this guy is it, it's kind of like a subset 
of um, the, the traditional modeling perspective, but it's got the majority of what you need in there. So the only things I really see lacking, um, obviously it's not got things like inverse kinematics or animation, et cetera, uh, other than that basic event-driven stuff. Um, there is should probably add some beveling support to the box modeling tools. The um, sculpting tools are somewhat primitive, but they're you know there's enough there, and you don't want to overwhelm a beginner with too much stuff. So here is an example of a kind of scene that you can create. Again, you've got the ability to switch between isometric perspective. Um, it's a neat little program, and if you want to go ahead and check it out, it's quite simple. So this case, I am running this entirely in my browser. It is app.spline.design. A uh, little bit more details of it. So if you go to app, uh, sorry, I guess this is just spline.design. Uh, you can learn out a little bit more about it, but this is all about creating 3D scenes, editing materials and model 3D objects, control the uh, outcome of your design work. So you've got uh, real-time collaboration, so you can actually work with other developers. That's part of where the pricing comes into. We'll get to the pricing in just a second. Uh, you do have 3D modeling. So you got parametric objects such as boxes and, and spheres, applicable editing and more. Uh, there is some basic animation support in there. Um, you can create interactive experience, so you can uh, set up events that happen, like if you click on an object or whatever. Uh, you got material support in there, although no UV mapping as far as I've seen. Uh, 3D sculpting basics in there. Again, you can work with a team. You can export it out as a rendered image. There's polygonal modeling and so on and so forth. It's a neat tool. Uh, you can also actually export out as code, which is considered experimental at this point in time. But you can get your, CD, uh, your 3D scene then can be exported to your own web project and imported and embedded using the code that is generated. It's a neat project. In terms of binary versions, if you want to download it, there are binary versions available for uh, the M1 and Intel powered Macs, as well as Windows and Linux. So pretty much every platform is covered here. And if the platform is not covered here, uh, what you can do is what I did today, run it in the browser. So uh, in terms of pricing, it's, I don't know, it's pretty reasonable. Everything you just saw today, you can do. So basically you can do unlimited personal files, unlimited file viewers. Uh, you can have up to two team files, two editors per file, one team project. You get access to the library. Uh, the only thing is anything that you publicly export, um, you know, using uh, like hosted on their servers or whatever is going to have a logo or watermark on it. So if you wanna get rid of that watermark, you're gonna have to pay $7 a month. Um, this will give you unlimited personal folders and unlimited editors. So this is if you are working with other people People on your project and then we get nine dollars per team editor per month for super team this gives you unlimited everything and you get super benefits i got no idea what that means but uh what you'll find is this tier gives you 99.9 percent .9 of what you need which is actually quite nice and do remember uh once again uh, you do have the ability come in here and we can do an export out to GLTF, uh, which you can then import into pretty much every game engine out there, or you can pull that into uh, Blender without issue. So uh, definitely useful, reasonable pricing, and definitely a nice free basic tier here. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Spline. Uh, it, it's again, it's not going to replace the likes of Blender or um, 3D Studios Max or Maya anytime soon. But what it is, is a nice introductory, easy to use, multi-user compatible, uh, potentially web-based 3D application. Uh, and if you're kind of in the market for that, it's a solid program. It's not that hard to use. Um, and it's fairly simple to learn. Uh, you do have to register and sign in. As you can see, Bob Dole has signed up for an account, uh, but that's really the extent of it. So I uh, definitely recommend checking out Spline if that sounds good to you. Let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.